Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! And it's a, it's a strange day, this, because I kind of want you to ring me and tell me that the Sun's report on a Brexit consequence is Project Fear and there's actually nothing to worry about at all. And the Sun, which of course is a rabid and quite spectacularly ignorant supporter of Brexit, um, then becomes the villain of the piece. It's really, really weird. I don't know if you've seen this story yet. It's, it's bubbling under the, the news agenda, perhaps because it makes, at first glance, so little sense. Uh, the headline is thus, Ministers draw up secret plans to stockpile processed food in case of a no-deal Brexit, which casts the government in the role of those slightly odd people who, who, who keep, you know, a, a few tonnes of pot noodles in a hole at the bottom of the garden in case of a looming nuclear apocalypse. Except this isn't a looming nuclear apocalypse, this is a looming Brexit that Sun editor Tony Gallagher told his readers to vote for. So the message to them today seems to be, buy spam. And umbongo, because um, that might be what you have to live on in the event of all the supply chains coming into this country from continental Europe, according to this article. And I've got no reason to doubt it. 97% um, of the £22 billion worth of processed food and drinks that we import comes from the EU. The, 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 the funny little chap who wrote the story has been in touch to say that this is actually a very good move by the government to protect the jobs of the 400,000 workers employed in the sector. Please, God, their jobs are protectable, but I don't think you get to argue that you're trying to protect the jobs of the workers by putting in place a policy that's designed to undo the damage that you've done to those workers yourself. Um, who can answer? Who can help us with this? It, it's, a, it's a very strange one, actually, because I want it to be hogwash. This is one of the odd things about being on my side of the argument, is that people on the other side of the argument presume that we're as venal and petty and crass as, as they are. So we're supposed to actually enjoy evidence of being right. There is absolutely no joy to be derived from the government itself acknowledging, apparently, that leaving the European Union would uh, temporarily, we hope, entail the cessation of £22 billion pounds worth of processed food and drinks coming into this country. And it's not, of course, just the people who work in that specific industry who'd be affected. I suspect that the 400,000 figure is something of an underestimate. It's hard to think of a job in catering or comestibles that wouldn't involve at some point selling or processing food and drink that's come in from the continent. Um, I've got friends, oddly, as you know, in the greengrocer's trade. They tell me the absolute upper limit is 21 days um, on how long it would be before stuff currently in storage ran out and shelves would actually be empty. <clears throat> but you know me by now. I, 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 I kind of lean towards the chucklesome and the cheerful, whatever the weather, however bleak the news agenda may be. And I, I would rather giggle at the idea of us having to stockpile spam and umbongo um, they drink it in the Congo. I was having to stop past spam and umbongo as a direct consequence of Brexit. And yet, I mean, every time you think things can't get any madder, this story is being served up today. And it's a good story. If it, I mean, presume it's true. Um, despite the attempts to somehow spin it as, as good news for people who voted for Brexit, it is being served up by the country's leading Brexit cheerleader. I couldn't find it in the print edition of the paper. Um, but, but it is uh, probably my fault. It is definitely garnering a lot of attention on the internet, on the social media front. So, I mean, do you want me to read you the whole story? I, I, do you know what? I think I will actually read you the whole story today because the, 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 the child who wrote it has very good contacts on the sort of lunatic fringe of the Brexit movement. So one has to presume that it's true. Ministers have drawn up secret plans to stockpile processed food in the event of EU divorce talks collapsing to show Brussels that no deal is not a bluff. Let's just run through that first line again. The phone lines are open, by the way, 03456060973. I'd love you to um, give me a quick ring if you work in the sector. What happens if the stuff that comes into your company, and we'll focus, I think, on food and drink, the stuff that comes into your company now under single market and customs union rules, what happens if there's any change to that at all? If there's any delay or, God forbid, any sort of cessation? I mean, where, do you run a pub? Do you run a restaurant? Do you, have you thought about this? I don't think you should have had to. I, I think inflicting these sort of confidence 
sapping issues and these sort of questions on people who just want to go on with the business of serving up nice snap of an evening or, or helping people lubricate their enjoyment of tonight's football match. You did not go into catering to fret about customs unions and single markets. The problem is that nobody seems to take responsibility for fretting about customs unions and single markets. So g give me a call now and tell me whether or not you think we need to stockpile processed food and drink, OK, from someone in the business. 0345 973 is the number that you need. I mean, I guess, actually, to be selfish, the question is, should I be stockpiling food and drink? I I'd probably go for the posh noodles that you get in Chinese supermarkets. But I presume that they come in, they presumably come in containers from Southeast Asia, don't they? So they'd still be all right. I might stockpile them anyway, just to be on the safe side. Um, so that's the first line. I just want you to think about this. Ministers have drawn up secret plans to stockpile processed food in the event of EU divorce talks collapsing to show Brussels that no deal is not a bluff. So what we're saying to Brussels, still labouring under this ludicrous illusion that they're an enemy embarked upon a kind of game of chess, what we're saying to Brussels is, ha-ha! We have warehouses full of spam and umbongo, and we will live on that unless you do what we want. I, I know I say this to you a lot at the moment, and I know that it rarely proves to actually be the case, but I could be wrong. I really hope I'm reading this wrong. Ha ha ha, Brussels! This will teach you. We have corned beef coming out of our ears. We have spam on biblical scales stored in enormous warehouses that don't currently exist, but we, we're storing it. And we've got lots of umbongo and sunny delight. And that is what we will live on if you walk away or don't give us what we want in these negotiations. This is, I think, a bit like a haemophiliac threatening to cut themselves in the event of the person they're talking to not doing what they want. I mean, it effectively is like getting a gun out in negotiations and pointing it at your own head and saying, ha ha ha, give us what we want or we will blow our own brains out. I, I could be wrong. Maybe this is not a message to Brussels that says we will be living on spam and umbongo if you don't know what we want. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll read on. It's a masterpiece, this story. Theresa May has ordered no deal planning to step up, with the government poised to start unveiling some of the 300 contingency measures in the coming weeks. Theresa May and her cabinet have drawn up plans to stockpile processed food in the event of a no-deal Brexit. So... No deal is better than a bad deal, but no deal involves stockpiling processed food. What the hell would a bad deal involve? Also, they need us more than we need them, although we now need to start stockpiling spam and dumbongo. At last week's Chequers Summit, Brexiteer ministers demanded more be done to prepare for Britain leaving the EU without a new arrangement in place. There's a typo in my copy here, but I'll, I'll sub-edit that out. <sighs> The Sun can reveal that includes emergency measures to keep Britain's massive food and drinks industry afloat. The Sun can reveal that a no-deal Brexit would threaten the survival of Britain's massive food and drinks industry. How can people write this stuff so dishonestly? It's quite spectacular. I know the foot soldiers are generally only following orders, but at some point, surely, dignity has to intervene and you say, I can't write a story pretending this is good news. This is literally about the entire nation stockpiling spam and umbongo because the free flow of goods, 97% of which comes from the European Union, is going to be compromised and possibly curtailed. Uh, that's where the numbers come from. More than £22 billion worth of processed food and drinks are imported into the UK. 97% from the EU in an industry that keeps 400,000 workers employed in the UK. It gets worse, guys. Similar stockpiles are also being prepared for medical supplies amid fears of chaos at British ports next year. But when we told you there'd be chaos at British ports next year, you said that was Project Fear, Mr Editor of The Sun, but for whom the phone lines are always open, um, have been ever since he accused me of all manner of foul, foul calumnies. And exaggerations. 0345 6060973 is the number Captain Snowflake needs to ring in and prove he's not a coward. So we're stockpiling medical supplies amid fears of chaos at British ports next year. The two things have happened today. The Sun, which is the largest cheerleader for Brexit, has essentially acknowledged that there could be chaos at British ports next year and that we need to stockpile stat spam and umbongo in order to be able to keep eating in the event of a no deal Brexit, while pretending still. So low is the opinion they hold of their readers. In such contempt do they hold their own audience, the people who pay their wages, that they think they can serve up this sort of nonsense as somehow being a positive. And the second thing that's happened today is it's possibly even more remarkable. Pretty Patel, um, 
a former minister, of course, has said it doesn't matter anymore whether Brexit is good or bad, or, or it doesn't. We need to stop arguing about whether Brexit is a bad idea and just get on with it. Now, I told you this was going to happen, but I didn't quite believe it would happen so crassly. For prominent Brexiters to say, look, let's not argue about whether it's a bad idea anymore, which is kind of admitting that it's a really bad idea, because if you could win that argument, you would have done. So let's stop talking about what a bad idea it is and just press on with delivering it, because we have to. It, it, it's, let's stop arguing about whether or not we should have a parachute before we jump out of this plane and just jump out of the plane, because it's the will of the people. Those are the two things today, Pretty Patel in the Sun, in, in perfect harmony to highlight the weapons-grade hypocrisy that has now swept the nation. Similar stockpiles are being prepared for medical supplies amid fears of chaos at British ports next year, but that's Project Fear. The plan is aimed at keeping Britain's food and drinks industry afloat through stockpiling after exit day on 29th of March 2019. Imagine that on the side of a bus. Vote Brexit and hopefully we can keep the food and in drinks industry afloat. Vote Brexit to hopefully stay afloat by stockpiling spam, gammon and umbongo. 03456060973 if you want to, um, I don't know what you want to do today. Uh, dilute the levels of my disbelief would be a start. Brexit department insiders also claim plans have also been wargamed to ease pressure on Calais, including importing and exporting more goods through Holland, Belgium and directly from Spain. Last week, Downing Street said no deal preparation work is to be stepped up and led by new Brexit Secretary Dominic Raab. So, I mean, this means that we've got... The problem is at our ports. So we're going to alleviate a problem at our ports by setting sail from Belgium, Holland and Spain. Where do you think they're going to land these boats, you complete cretins? What, are they some magical new port? At the top of the faraway tree? Narnia? We're going to open a new port called Narnia. It's all ready to go. All we have to do is the Hogwarts port. Hogports. That's what we're going to do. This is in a national newspaper. Yesterday, the Cabinet newbie briefed fellow ministers on measures Britain is taking, with Number 10 saying it's sensible to make preparations for all scenarios, and that includes no deal. With trade talks due to recommence in Brussels next week, a Whitehall source said preparations for no deal are actually much further down the line than people realise, and we'll be making that clear in the coming weeks. So, so there's the article. I've actually here's the tweet from the bloke that wrote it. Sneer, sneer, sneer. Four hundred thousand Brits rely on processed food industry for a job, and James, who earns ten times most of them, I presume he, he means ten times more than most of them, wants you to laugh at sensible measures put in place to protect them. I, I don't want you to laugh. I want you to scream and shout at the people who have created a scenario that sees the government planning to stop par food. But this is the character, this is the child that wrote the story. The level of delusion and befuddlement now is... I mean, it's, it's institutional. It's so entrenched. I don't know how you get out of this. This child has written a story stating that the government is drawing up secret plans to stockpile processed food, and he's trying to sell it to his readers as positive spin for the government that is creating precisely the situation that entails the necessity of stockpiling spam and dumbongo. Do you know, of all the times I've said to you in the last couple of years, give me a ring and just pull my pants down. Seriously, expose my idiocy. Give me a, give me a quick lesson in what I've missed here. I don't think I've ever meant it quite as much as I do today. Hit the numbers now. You know how it works. 03456060973 is the number that you need. Okay, give me a heads up on what's happening in your world. Will you, for example, as a fully paid-up member of the uh, Brextremist fringe, will you be quite happy to see rationing come back as long as your ration book is blue? That possibly will be the next big article published in The Sun about how the government is preparing for a no-deal Brexit by giving us blue ration books to go with our blue passports. <sighs> oh, 03456060973. It's not funny, actually, is it? Here it is. This is um, from, from June the 14th, 2016. We are about to make the biggest political decision of our lives. The Sun today urges everyone to vote leave. We must set ourselves free from dictatorial Brussels. Fast forward a couple of years and change, and here's the Sun today. Ministers have drawn up secret plans to stockpile processed food in the event of EU divorce talks collapsing to show Brussels that no deal is not a bluff. Just 
bear with me for a minute. I, I promise I'll, I'll allow some other voices onto the programme in a moment, but this is one of those stories that grows the more I discuss it in my own mind. Just, just imagine for a moment that on June the 16th, 2016, um, if there'd been any sort of mass market remain supporting newspapers, imagine that it had come out and said, if you vote leave, there's a very real possibility that within two years the government will be stockpiling processed food. What would have happened? Just, I mean, I know sometimes I get on your nerves by being right about everything, but just imagine for a minute what would have happened. Just ask yourself that, especially if you're on still labouring and, and languishing on the other side of reality from me. What would have happened? What would you have done as, as a proud Brexiteer if you'd opened up a newspaper on June the 16th, 2016, and it had said, David Cameron warned last night that a no-deal Brexit from Brussels would see the British government forced to stockpile processed food. And then they threw in some numbers like 97% of the £22 billion worth of processed food and drinks that we bring into the UK um, will be at threat, will be at risk. What would you, I mean, genuinely, uh, you know how desperately I try to search for things upon which we can all agree. Everyone would have gone nuts, right? Even I probably would have gone, oh, shut up, it can't be that bad. And that, despite the fun that we'll have and the conversations that will unfold now, I, I, I would like serious answers to the questions from people within the industries relevant industries, whether or not this is necessary, whether or not crashing out in March of next year really would mean that we should all actually be stockpiling food, because when the government stockpiles run out, you'll be reliant on the ones that you've got in your cellar. Oh, man, that just sounds so silly. Please ring me and tell me why it's bonkers. Jake's in Portsmouth. Jake, what would you like to say? Morning, James O'Brien. How are you? Very well, Jake in Portsmouth. What would you like to say? Uh, I just... I know people have been saying on Twitter recently that, you know, politics does seem to be descending into a bit of a satire reminiscent of the thick of it, but I think this sort of really defines it today, really. I mean, of all the things that you're going to sort of publicly release to the people that you're trying to bargain with, you're going to tell them that we're keeping processed meat and umbongo in a warehouse well, somewhere the, in the, the, the national food shortages. The clown who wrote the story says that it is a story about sensible measures being put in place to protect the 400,000 Brits who rely on processed food industry for a job um and i mean I, I, the, the, the way these propagandists work is is to appeal very cynically to some sort of notion that that ordinary working people are are manipulated and exploited by the metropolitan liberal elite but this is a metropolitan liberal elite looking at a story and saying why have you put four hundred thousand jobs at risk and they're responding by saying mm, sneer 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 spam and <laughs> bongo I don't. I actually don't get it. I I, I can laugh. I still retain my sense of humour. But this is this, yeah. this is you beyond funny yourself. now. This is telling four hundred thousand people that we've put their jobs at risk and that it's the fault of the people who said we shouldn't do it and that the people who said we should do it are brilliant because they're stockpiling spam. What's happening, Jake? I'm not sure. Something which I would like to raise. Um, yes. I'm a student nurse currently in my final year at the moment. Thank you. And as much as I could raise all sorts about the bursaries and things, you talk about stockpiling and national shortages. Yes. You know, so far at the moment on my final placement here, you know, I'm hearing more and more often we've got national shortages of antibiotics. But that can't horrifying. be linked to Brexit, can it? Abs I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, I've, I'm literally... Here's, here's the other I'm 22, answer. I'm new into the profession. I, I don't you, know whether so it happened know, or not you, before. You haven't dug but, in yet. You know, you, like, you see the antibiotics every day, you know, they're not manufactured in the UK. And it does make you think, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, we do buy medicine, you know, the prices are going to increase. Obviously, we're having this NHS injection supposedly, so you'd hope that wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, but, but that's non-existent that money. Mind. That's, that's non-existent. Similar stockpiles are also being prepared for medical supplies amid fears of chaos at British ports next year. Again, this is in the, 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 the house journal of the most bovine brand of Brexit. This is the Sun newspaper, edited by Captain Snowflake Tony Gallagher. This is, this is actually unbelievable. They're, they are writing about the need for stockpiling medical supplies, while in the same breath echoing the Project Fear rhetoric of yesteryear. I, I don't get it. You don't get it either. I hope you're wrong about antibiotics. I hope they're wrong about food. I hope we're all wrong <laughs> yeah. about everything and that somehow the unicorns will all turn up and we'll all live happily ever after. Somehow, maybe. Somehow, maybe. Sounds like a country and western song. Twenty-five. In fact, our country's turning into a country and western song, isn't it? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Where's Johnny Cash when you need him most? David's in Bristol. David, stop piling. It's just silly, right? <laughs> It's the first time call for me, James. Nice to meet you. Okay. Um, uh, I'm from Glasgow, but at the moment I'm sitting in Middlewich outside the factory. I'm waiting, waiting to go in. So, um, what, to work? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I've been. Uh, I'm a sound engineer, so I'm, I'm dealing with a tannery system. 
OK. Um, yeah. Why have you rung um, me? I mean, I'm delighted you have, but, but, but what's, what's, what's the point you want to make? I've, I've been trying to ring you for the past few weeks because... Uh, Busy I've, old switchboard. You've been, you've been searching for the reason for Brexit. I have. For all this time, I've been listening to you for almost... What, go, what, what do they think they've won is, is, a, is, a, is a refrain, but don't answer it, otherwise I'll have to rewrite a chapter of my book, which is due out in November. Carry on, uh, David. It's, it's uh, ATAD. That's the Anti-Tax Avoidance Directive. Oh, I know that. I, I know about this. But, uh, but that's not about stockpiling. This is the, the, the yeah, EU rules that will make it a lot harder for big businesses and plutocrats to to avoid their, uh, paying their taxes. And, and I thought that was a conspiracy theory when it first floated, but looking at it now... It happens. Uh, it happens on the first of January of next year. I know. And, I know. We, and we come out on the twenty twenty ninth of March. The next year. We do, and I think you're probably onto something, but we're talking about Umbongo and Spam yep. today. We're talking about stockpiling. Where do you beans stand on stockpiling? Are the, beans, beans are the best thing to store because they've got... A, the, the beans? Pro, pro, yep, the protein, the, they've got starch, they've got... Baked uh, beans? Baked beans, and also they've got liquid, they've got water in them as well. How many do you... Beans. You're not, I mean, you're joking, you don't actually stockpile baked beans yet. Of course, I'm joking. Yes, good. <laughs> but when does it stop being funny? Uh, it stops being When we run out of beans, uh, laughing uh, boy, uh, that's uh, when it uh, stops uh, being funny. If you imagine, if you imagine that the whole of society is just uh, two meals away from absolute chaos. <sighs> but how, how far away are we from not having the two meals. Do you see what I mean? This is why the story... Well, I, can, I can't not... Imagine, go on. If you imagine what's going to happen at Dover with the, with the, the, uh, the, 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 the wagons trying to get across and wagons trying to come the other way with food... Yeah, but we're going to we're going to relieve pressure on Dover by importing and exporting more goods through Holland, Belgium and directly from Spain. I read it in The Sun. It'll still, it'll still require a port to offer... No, 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 it won't. Because <laughs> it sets sail from Holland, Belgium, and directly from Spain, and then something happens, and it ends up in our kitchen cupboards. You don't need to actually land it at a British port. You can't. Of course, you can relieve pressure on Dover by importing and exporting more goods from Holland, Belgium, and directly from Spain. Do you know what you're doing as you wait as you wait to go to work on the tannoy in that factory? You are sneering. You're sneering at the 400,000 people who work in the processed food industry. You monster. You Ramona. You traitor. <sighs> Are you just before you go? Have you um, ever tried cross and blackwell beans? I've seen this coming now for for the two old years. It's going to be a no deal because it has to be a no deal. You ignored my question about Cross and Blackwell Beans, and frankly, I don't know. <laughs> things, things are controversial enough already. I, and that is the worry, OK? And I think the groundwork has been done. Two things today. The Sun treating its readers with, even by their own standards, treating their readers with so much contempt to say to them, we told you it was all going to be brilliant, and now we're telling you that it's time to stop par food, and that that's brilliant as well. And, and the people who write this stuff, and the people who publish it, as soon as Rupert Murdoch's given them permission to do so, they, they honestly look at the page after they finish writing and think, not only are the people who read this absolute scum who are going to swallow this crud like it's going out of fashion, but anybody who stands up and points out what crud it is, I will tell the scum that they're the enemy. And they're so scummy, that scum, they'll believe me. Well, sorry, guys. I'll keep telling the truth. You can keep calling me a sneering Ramona, and then you can explain to the people you consider to be scum why stockpiling spam and dumbongo is the brave new sunny uplands that you promised them just two years ago were only around the corner. Your question's pretty straightforward, actually. Um, please persuade me that this is Project Fear. The Sun reports today that ministers have drawn up secret plans to stockpile processed food in case of a no-deal Brexit. The challenge I would really like you to rise to is explaining how this shows Brussels that no deal is not a bluff. How insisting that we are going to um, stockpile spam and umbongo. Although I've got a feeling umbongo was invented in Cumbria. I, I mean, we might be alright for umbongo, but I'll stay with it as a figure of speech. We're going to stockpile spam and umbongo, and that will show Brussels, haha, -ha, that we mean business. Explain that to me genuinely. Um, 03456060973. And then. Explain to all of us whether or not this is just Project Fear nonsense that The Sun has published or whether the newspaper that told its readers to vote for Brexit is really now telling them that we need to stockpile just shy of £22 billion worth of processed food a year. <sighs>
Matthew's in High Wycombe. Matthew, um, my sense of humour is, is diminishing with every passing minute today. I started off quite chucklesome about this story, but the more I think about it, the more, the more indicative of the national malaise it becomes. Are you here to cheer us up? Um, well, yeah, I will say, in a sense, it is and it is. So I can't claim current knowledge, James. But um, right. oh, sorry, let me let me first of all pause to say that um, in a just world, Boris Johnson would be tarred, feathered, and paraded for public humiliation more than he already has. But uh, enough of, enough about that. Unfortunately, we don't live in the 18th century, uh, as many people on the Brexit side have found out to their to their chagrin. Well, I don't know anyway. the pennies dropped yet for half of them. But sure. can't carry on. Okay, so I mean, um, in terms of sort of ordinary foodstuffs um, from my experience of shipping I did it for two years tranche shipping which is in and out of countries and also sometimes into countries um, basically when it comes to spam you can choose not to eat spam and maybe eat tin sausages instead so there's no one who's eating spam now is going to get no tinned meat and you can get tinned meat from lots of other places that aren't yes. Europe and you can stockpile no, uh, corned beef comes from Argentina of course exactly so it's, it's, it's not refrigerated so it'll cost money to warehouse but actually you could stockpile and forecast quite safely with no problem what, what would be an issue is things that so when you say it's processed food it's it's not the people um, let's put it this way so sorry so you make uh, fruit smoothies um, if you import raw fruit from overseas, you can do it from somewhere else. But let's say you made a product which required, I don't know, let's say an extract. Yes. And the major supplier of that extract is based in Europe because it requires a very big, very expensive factory. And the extract... I just had to dump five seconds of the program because you swore, but that's the second time in two days that people have sworn it during quite mild-mannered conversations because sometimes, I although you are Australian, are you? No, South African. Oh, but I, I beg I, your I do pardon. Apologize. But in the Southern Hemisphere, that's barely a swear word. It appears, <laughs> it appears before the watershed on Australian television. But yeah, so, so carry on. Go on. That's right. In Afrikaans. Yeah. Um, so ba basically, the problem will be is when you have an end product that requires a specialised ingredient, said ingredient can't be refrigerated for too long because it either goes off, or it or it would cost too much to refrigerate. So a lot of processed food will be adult will, will be under under threat of, of adulteration. Some of it won't be for a, for. A, sure. I mean, we we know that that's how tin food works. But what worries me in what you've just said, and perhaps there's a reason why this is utterly absent from the mm -hmm. um, from the porridge that the Sun have printed today, is if if our processed food needs to be stockpiled because the. Um, unfettered passage of it from the European Union to the United yeah. Kingdom becomes threatened, then surely unprocessed food will be similarly hit. Of, of course. So my but how can they not mention that? So, so it, this, things that rot in a day or mm. in a week, you know, everything from butter right through to... to, to I, I, actually, I suppose with a merguez sausage or a salami, you've got a little bit of a longer shelf life. But with a traditional sausage or oranges or... or, 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 or yeah. Yeah, so so to go so so the things that can't be substituted w when they're non-essentials, it doesn't really matter. So, for example, let, let's say I don't know, you make a lemonade, right? Yes. And you need a lemon extract. Uh, you go out of business. That's bad for your employees. But actually, people can choose to 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 have other lemonade. What will be a problem is, um, and I don't have full details here, but for example, um, my grandma was hospitalized. She was fed a, a medical mix substitute into the bloodstream because she couldn't eat. So there might be, and I don't know the truth of this, there might yeah. be a British supplier for some of those ingredients, but there could also be people making that, say in France and shipping it across Europe and you can't build one of those factories overnight right. and you probably can't refrigerate that mix past a certain point so if there's a variability let's say let's say it's good for a week and just in time or you say we're going to clear dover in a day mm. a variability of of a two-day delay or a three-day delay at dover or felix Day, doesn't matter where it is means that you you'll have an issue with the product going out and it's not a choice of, oh, well, I don't want to have my lemonade. It's a choice of now we, we're trying to feed someone a specific formula because they're diabetic or they're sick or whatever the case may be. And now we, we have stockpiles either going off or can't be used. And that, that kind of thing can't be done in a second. So, I mean, that, that, I mean everything you've said sounds pretty much straightforward and inarguable to me. Mm -hmm. um, you're surprisingly calm about it. Is that because you, you don't believe that the government will lead us towards this precipice or, or, or because you're moving um, back to South Africa? No, not, not at all. I mean, um, it, it's one of those things is, 
the whole thing is so unreal it's almost not yeah. worth it's too big like, to take in yeah, the I'm, scale of exactly. the, the silliness now if i could just add one more thing james I, i'm a i'm a big fan so um mm. my only criticism of you that would be is and this, everyone is Brexit is crowded out talk about lots of much more important things. So you've correctly diagnosed the howl of pain that caused it because of deindustrialization. But in a sense, it's not just globalization that's doing it. It's probably automation. And so, for example, automation is a mega trend that's coming for most of our jobs. It is. I, you, you, you're absolutely right. But it's, I mean, if, if you'll allow me to tell you how my job works, it, it's not a radio phone-in because no one will ring in to say, I can't wait until robots take my job. So we, we discuss that in the news and we will do it as an of aside. Course. But when it comes to getting people to ring in about things that directly affect their lives you need a di little bit of tension a little bit of agreement of and disagreement so unless you're suggesting that we are um, irresponsibly ignoring all the millions of people who can't wait to be starving <laughs> to death as a robot does their job then I'll, I'll back myself when it comes to deciding what I talk about uh, fair enough all right okay My, there then. you go Gary's in Enfield Gary what would you like to say yeah I, I switched on the radio about 10, 15 minutes ago, and, that's, and uh, one couldn't be excused for thinking that we're preparing for war or something. Well, this know, is the article in The Sun, which I'm hoping you're going to tell me is a load of old nonsense. Ministers have drawn up secret plans to stockpile processed food in the event of EU divorce talks collapsing to show Brussels that no deal is not a bluff. And, and the chap who wrote it has been in touch, although oddly he's not rung in, which is a shame. I'd love to ask him why I didn't mention fresh food. But um, the chap who wrote it has been in touch to say that this is... Really good news because it will protect the jobs of the 400,000 people whose livelihoods are being threatened by the Brexit that the editor of The Sun told them to vote for. Although he didn't put it quite like that. So should we panic or not? Well, well I was under the impression that under EU uh, trade uh, regulations, food and medicines are exempt. So, you know, no. you look at this... No, 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 they're not. Where on earth did you get that idea? Well, um, they export loads of foods to non-EU countries with the no restrictions or anything like that. So I'm, be, I'm no, really no, they, surprised... They, they don't. I don't. Yeah. The whole but point about being in the single market is they're the only places you can export to without any restrictions or tariffs or friction. Well, I was always in the impression that food and medicine... How did you vote? Are exact. Um, um, I, I would guess my out-of-date study books I did maybe when I did... But you know, did you vote in the referendum on that, on that understanding? Well, I, I was, well, I was a Remainer, and, and there was good reason why I wanted to. But the, but the article you're referring to just makes sense. I can't see that happening at all, and, and all these scaremongers help. But if I can take an analogy... No, I don't I need any analogies, because, I mean, I, I, I love you, Gary, like a brother, but, but you, you just stated an absolute untruth. Uh, I mean, you've just stated a misconception on a, on a weapons-grade scale. The idea that the European no, Union right. can export food and medicine without restrictions or, or, or customs checks or tariffs to non-European Union countries. It's really important you register what a huge error that is, because it's the kind of thing that's led us towards Brexit, even though you didn't vote for it, apparently. But, but, that's, but, that's beyond... It's impossible for me to express what a massive error that is. Well, I was impressed that food is an essential item, that you won't, you won't restrict food going to another country that requires yeah, it. Yeah, well, I, so, I mean, if, uh, if you're going to carry I, on down this road, we're going to have to part, I'm afraid, because right, you, so you are essentially that, telling me the moon is made of cheese, and I promise you it uh, isn't, okay. and you say, well, I've always been under the impression that it is, and you're trying to continue the conversation. Well, okay, Ex excluding that aside, I can't see, you know, the Sun article seems more like scaremongering than anything else. Well, why would they I be scaremongering if they think Brexit is a good idea still? Well, Brexit... Well, I, I don't understand where that comes from. But I'm, I'm well, that's the question that I'm asking, yeah, exactly. although I'm glad that we've clarified the... the, 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 the I, mean, I mean, that's insane if you thought that we could import and export food between non-EU countries and EU countries without any checks, measures, tariffs or, 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 or customs. Then that what would be the point of the single market and the customs union at all? What do the words even mean? I, I think possibly it's my fault, because you did mention you'd only been listening for ten minutes. Maybe, maybe you got slightly the wrong end of the stick, in which case I'm very glad to have turned it round for you. Alessandro has, uh, has been in touch to... Oh. He says, I just want to point out... I haven't checked this. You're, you're welcome to. I just want to point out that the meat we import from Argentina is by European trade agreement. So if we leave with no deal, we will lose this agreement too. So we won't be able to replace our spam with corned beef. We'll be stockpiling both. In fact, I wonder, I mean, given that 97% of the £22 billion pounds worth of processed food and drinks that come into the UK comes from the EU, the idea that we could suddenly replace it with different sources, well, it becomes a rather desperate straw at which to clutch. But then Alessandro rides into town on his big white horse to point out that actually a lot of those different sources that we might be able to trade with at the moment, we can only trade with because of the trade agreements we've got with them as a result of our membership of the European Union. But I, I just, I, I mean, genuinely wonder what it takes now 
So today you've got two stories which seem to me to be utterly, utterly emblematic of where we are. And yet a significant portion of the country, a significant number of people listening to this programme, can see exactly the same stories and conclude that we're in a completely different place from the one where I... The evidence of my own eyes tells me I am. What, what are you relying on, if not the evidence of your own eyes? So you have the Sun newspaper, the biggest Brexit cheerleader in the country, um, explaining that the government is now drawing up secret plans to stockpile processed food. Imagine that on the side of a bus. Vote Brexit, we'll be stockpiling food by Christmas 2018. Shut the front door. Come on, guys. Admit at least that if David Cameron had said in early 2016 that we'll be stockpiling food by Christmas 2018 if the hard Brexiters get their way, you would have shouted Project Fit. Even I would have done. I said, oh, come on, Cameron, wind your neck in. But here you have the, the government's chief cheerleader, The Sun. The editor of The Sun was there at Downing Street the night before the Chequers meeting. This is the stuff they agreed to. Well, if we do this and if we do that, is there any way you could possibly get one of your flunkies to write an article pretending that this is good news? Yep, I'll get this chap Harry Cole. He'll write, he'll do whatever we've told. Yeah, absolutely. I say jump. He says, how high, boss? And he's written an article here, followed it up on Twitter, claiming that it's somehow sneering to point out that nobody voted for stockpiling processed food and nobody yet can understand how this somehow shows Brussels the strength of our position, which is the argument in the sun. And then you have Priti Patel, the former cabinet minister and staunch Brexit campaigner, writing today, this is no longer an argument about whether Brexit was a good idea. Desperately saying, please, please stop pointing out what a bad idea it is. Now, that's my interpretation of what she's written. You're welcome to provide an alternative interpretation. This is no longer an argument about whether Brexit was a good idea. Look, if I had told people to vote for it, by now, I would have proved to them that it was a good idea to do so, or I would have apologised and cleared off. You don't get to say, after two years, that thing I told you was a really good idea, mm, let's stop arguing about whether it was a good idea or not. Because if you were right, the evidence would be there. Today, the evidence is that we're going to be stockpiling spam and corned beef. Oh, crikey. How else can you see these stories except as evidence that they are deliberately steering us towards chaos? Orchestrated, tax-avoiding, food stockpiling chaos. 03456060973. And really, as, as you contemplate the potential wreckage described by the sun, the House Journal of bovine Brexit... That you contemplate the potential wreckage described by them, can the colour of your passport really still comfort you? 10.52 is the time. Richard is in Tiverton in Devon. Richard, what would you like to say? Thank you, James. Hello, um, Richard. I'm a small farmer, as you gather from my accent. So I, well, I, can't, I, can't tell, I can't tell how tall you are by your accent. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. Um, look, um, I'm stockpiling diesel. I'm planting up root vegetables. I'm increasing the amount of beef and lamb that I keep because I can see quite clearly where this is going to lead. Because hard Brexit not only results in queues of lorries as far as the eye can see, but it also results in 80%, 80% of farm businesses becoming no longer viable. Why is that? Because they lose, because they lose their EU subsidies. And if you look at from, uh, say Scotland and Wales, more than 50% of all farm incomes comes from subsidies. They also lose their home market um, because obviously with the, the very first deal they'll do is with the USA with much cheaper, much lower grade, um, lower animal welfare provision. They also lose their export markets in Europe for lamb and beef. So not only will we be stockpiling food, but we were watching farmers go out of business at a huge rate of knots. Now, I think, oddly, that the economist, the only economist really that, that, that Jacob Rees-Mogg refers to when he makes his ludicrous unicornist claims, agrees with you, doesn't he? Hasn't Patrick Minford said that, that, that we will see the collapse of British industry and British agriculture, but the benefits accrued by being able to import chlorinated chicken and such like will make up for it. So, so people like you just have to suck it up for the greater good. I'm pretty sure, I hope I've not misrepresented him, but the, the only... No, 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 Patrick Minford said in evidence to a committee that just like, quote, coal and steel, yes. unquote, 
manufacturing and farming would no longer make sense and would cease to operate. It, it was absolutely... Hang on, no, no, just stop for a minute and let me bask in the brilliance of my listeners and callers, Richard, because I, I genuinely, you know, that was pretty special what you did then. I, I, I was trying to drag oh, it up. It gets better, James. <laughs> it gets better if you give me a little, little bit more. Fill your boots. Fill your wellies. <laughs> But the thing is, mate, that you're too nice. You don't <laughs> really understand what this is all about. Yeah. I'm... Have you read your Hayek? I have, have. you read The Road to Serfdom? Have you read your Mies? The state has to be smashed. Taxation has to end. Borders have to come down. The welfare state has to be abolished. And people have to live under the only one true faith. Money. The only supernatural force that exists, which is the market. And that is what hard Brexit is about. That's what the Brexit but is. But you, you, you're very kind to say I'm too nice. I do, I do recognise that the only ideological explanation for what they're doing is, is what you describe. And I do think that that is what people like Minford and Jacob Rees-Mogg want, even though, obviously, well, they pretend to be anti-elites and, and encourage their cap doffing, forelock tugging um, uh, hordes to march themselves over a cliff. And not everybody who is... Actually, I wonder if everyone who is pro-hard Brexit, an awful lot of people who have been persuaded that they are pro-hard Brexit haven't got a Scooby-Doo what they're being persuaded to do. We can agree on that. And that's why I'm nice. Because you're not going to tempt them back out of the darkness by calling them idiots. You can only tempt them back out of the darkness by showing them the evil that's been done to them by newspaper editors who told them to vote for it and today are telling them that we're going to be stockpiling food. Well, absolutely, but you, you must understand, when, when they hear, when you hear politicians in the Conservative Party talking about someone who, quote, believes in Brexit... Believes, unquote, believes. Yep, yeah, believes. This is faith in the supernatural nature of the free market. It is, comp you know, it's like the Moonies. That's what you have to think of. It's the Moonies. But behind them, there are the really, really dark people. There are the people who see that the EU is moving against tax havens. There are the people right. in the American neoliberal far right who, fundraise, who funded the effective emasculation of every economics department mm -hmm. in the Western world that now believes in, 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 in neoclassical economics, which, although it's completely failed to predict what's going to happen uh, in the past with, with, the, with, with all the rest of it. I think the, the one thing I'd like to, to end on, unless yes. you want to talk more to me, is Boris Johnson is telling you the truth. When he says, quote, meltdown, unquote, that's what he means. They want to let loose chaos capitalism in this country. They want to see the sort of evisceration that, that has taken place in other countries when liberal democracy has been destroyed. And if you doubt the, the, the commitment of the EU to maintain the four pillars, you only have to go to a Greek island and see what the European Central Bank did to the Greek people. They had no medicine, they had no food, they had no energy. What makes people think that that won't happen here if there's a hard Brexit? Richard, I have to point out at this point that nothing says metropolitan liberal elite like being a farmer in Devon. Thank you kindly. Thank you. you <laughs> oh, man alive, you have to laugh. Am I too nice? That could be our topic for 11 o'clock. Ian is in Leeds. Ian, what's going on? What is actually going on? Well, I don't know if I could follow the last caller. He's pretty but, good, wasn't um, he? Yeah, here's the thing. We've reached a point where Project Fear is like a snake that's eating its own tail and going revolving around itself. The article you've pointed out in the sun, yeah. I'll just, I'm, I'm just looking at it online on my phone here. It's unbelievable. There's a, there's a comment They're left by someone, I won't mention the name. No. It says, it says, stop messing around and get us out. Yeah. We have had enough of this fake news. If we start running out of food, use the foreign aid budget to buy more, oh. then chuck out the scroungers. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if those people are real anymore, but, but I mean, you know, you've got troll farms being set up in, in, in Russia. You've got kind of some of the fake news outlets here have absolute um, legions of, of bots and shills paid to bombard comment sections with stuff like that. And what it does is shift the window of, of plausibility and rationality. So, you, you know, if you get enough truly bonkers people in a forum, then the centre of that forum shifts towards bonkers. But... I don't imagine many people listening to this are thinking, you know, well, no, I mean, that's the problem. People who listen to this programme generally are thinking. The ones who aren't thinking, possibly, are the ones leaving comments like the one you've just read out. 
Well, you might be right. I mean, it could it could be a uh, a, 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 a made up uh, quote that from a person who doesn't exist. You, you could be right, but the point is that you know Brexit is, to me uh, the ones who are still believing in this experiment. So, you know, they remind me of um, the movie um, Downfall. Yeah. Where you've got um, Adolf Hitler in his bunker, and he's being told by his generals that his divisions uh, don't exist anymore. And he's moving around imaginary legions of soldiers on a map. And he's been told by his generals... So they're not there anymore. Yeah, they've been wiped out. They're and he's still the moving them about. Yeah, I mean, I, do, do you know... The, for Russian, the, uh, the not... Russian Army is just a couple of hundred metres away from him. And he's still in denial. I, I mean, it is a yeah. bit like that, except that, under the last fellow, under Richard's analysis, it, it, it's, it's deliberate rather than delusional. I don't know what's more frightening. Deliberate or delusional? It's like, here, mate, you've, you've, you've crashed my, my carefully cultivated jingles. Um, we'll speak soon. It's 11 o'clock. And um, just to kind of put the icing on the cake of the story we were discussing in the last hour, it, it won't just be tinned food, a lot of you have pointed out to me. Processed means everything. Like, you know, ready meals, pate. Pate. <laughs> Probably not the best thing to choose. Cheap lasagna. Ice cream. I mean, processed food just means anything that's been through a production line rather than come straight from farm to plate. So, you know, well done, everyone. It's four minutes after 11. Let's talk about something completely different. Please, God, let's talk about something completely different. I would like just to take a history lesson. It's callers like Richard in Tiverton who, who make me think I, every day I could set the bar even higher than I did yesterday for the calibre and quality of callers to the programme. I am doing me this time, time.